Hey, Lyle, you want to start off tonight's episode? Don't mind if I do! Today, on So To Speak, on our 13th episode, which just so happened to coincide with Halloween, we did not plan that, we thought we'd talk about the annual Treehouse of Horror. Because our last Simpsons episode was, uh, <laughs> a little overzealous. Yeah. I mean, but, we just wanted to emp- hit home, like, how awesome it was to, uh, basically go back to the golden age of The Simpsons. Well... There's a part two of that golden age, and that's the Halloween episodes. We figure that they were deserving of their own episode. Welcome to So To Speak. I'm Evan Mead. Evan Mead, don't you mean... Oh, that's right. Heaven Bleed. Hev- I'm Heaven Bleed. And I'm a vile ghoul digger. And tonight we are with our guests, Jaws Weinberg and Michael Camp Crystal Lake. They are... Excuse ba- me, Jaws wine screen. Thank you very much. Jaws wine screen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> We're giving uh, each other ghoulish, goofy nicknames like the creators of The Simpsons. Just like the ha- writers. Just like the writers of The Simpsons do each Halloween. Thanks, bat groaning. Uh, we owe you one. So, uh, one of the things I've noticed in rewatching uh, the Halloween episodes, and um, it's worth mentioning that uh, Michael and Lyle have seen all of the. Uh, Halloween episodes. Thanks, Disney Plus. Yeah, but I have. I'm kind of a noob. I've only seen two thirds of them. I've seen the first twenty one and and one in a few. So I've seen twenty two of them roughly. So I'm like seventy seven percent of the way there. However, uh, one thing I've actually noticed in revisiting a lot of these is that, despite a few duds notwithstanding, the while the quality of the show has been kind of a roller coaster. A downward roller coaster, might I add. The Simpsons Halloween episodes have maintained a sense of horror, creativity, and hilarity in throughout the entirety of the show. And to uh, yeah, they've been, this they've been past fairly week, consistent. And yes. this this past week, we actually celebrated the 30th anniversary of the first Treehouse of Horror, which debuted in season two in 1990, October 25th, to be precise. <laughs> Correct. Yes. So, um, it, it, this is a momentous occasion, so we're going to honor these Simpsons Halloween episodes because they are, it's all, it's its own show in its own right, the Simpsons Halloween specials. They feel like they could be their own show, like, quite quite frankly. Uh, they've made, even if the, like I said, even if the original, sh- if, the, if the classic Simpsons went downhill, this, the Treehouse of Horrors have maintained some integrity, and we're here to talk about them tonight. We're specifically our favorites. It's worth mentioning that we're actually, even though it was kind of easy, we're not going to actually talk about uh, classics from the first 10 seasons. Like, this means uh, if you want to hear someone talk about the brilliance of The Shinning, Nightmare Cafeteria, Homer Squared, uh, you're going to have to go... Homer Cubed. Is it Homer Cubed or Squared? Yeah, it's a three. So Come it's on, cubed. how are you going to mix up one of like the best uses of 3D in the show? Homer <laughs> Cubed, yeah. I guess so, I guess what Evan's trying to say is we're not going to summarize every episode because that would be kind of boring, but we'll just go we over... We learned our lesson from last time. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go over this for four hours. But what we will do is we'll just talk about like the highlights of each episode and which one we think is like the best segment or... And have a little discussion. Yep. So, yeah. let's start with the one Treehouse of Horror that actually takes place in a frickin' treehouse. Okay. Treehouse of Horror 1. Okay. So, we have here Bad Dream House, Hungry Are the Damned, and the Raven. Um, I'm personally going to jump in and say that um, I'd have to say uh, Hungry Are the Damned is my favorite just because um, it introduces Kang and Kodos. That's yeah, a highlight. The, the, the highlights of and, each episode. And, uh... They they show up in each and every one. Yeah, and by the way, like I think this is one of the few times in the show's history where we actually see other members of Kang and Kodos's respective race. Played by James Earl Jones. Oh uh, yes, <laughs> and James Earl yeah, Jones. That's cool. anything about him. He's in actually every segment of the first one. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yes, he is, isn't he? He would come back for a few others, but uh, yeah, my f- Hungry or the Damned is my favorite. Yeah, that's so, a good one. The Raven is kind of boring. I, I kind of like the Raven because I like the Raven. Yeah, it, I think that's my favorite just because it, it's interesting because it's the only one where they straight up adapt an entire poem, 
And uh, what's funny about it is yeah. the way they deliver it, because you can you can see Homer getting steadily angrier throughout the episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just Homer belting out what? angry poetry. Just, that tickles my fancy. Yeah. And then, bit. yeah, Bart saying, Caught the raven. Eat yeah. my shorts. Were you little? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, yeah. What I really like about the raven is... Um, the Simpsons has not been around for that long in this point of time. It's not even a year old. Yeah. And a lot of early critics of the show kind of dismissed it as like being kind of like a dumb show. Like um, Barbara Bush famously said that like The Simpsons was the stupidest thing she'd ever seen. <laughs> and, oh. So um, that's why they brought but, her back for Two Bad Neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's exactly why. But but to me, it kind of speaks to. Um, the early years of The Simpsons being like a lot more clever than people give it credit for. Yeah, but there are some re- there are some really really highbrow kind of references in early episodes, which I really enjoyed discovering or rediscovering upon a recent rewatch. Like, it's entirely possible that that was like a lot of this generation's introduction to Edgar Allan Poe, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, and the star, po- the fact that they could get star power like James Earl Jones, because James Earl Jones was pretty big at this point in history. In 1990, yeah. he was already the voice of Darth Vader. Um, he hadn't been Mufasa yet. That wouldn't happen for another four years. But I mean, maybe, was yeah. Jake Society around this time, or just after Lion King? This was before Lion King. Lion King was 1994. Uh, Trials of Horror One was 1990. Right? No, I'm saying he was in Dead Poet Society, I believe. Actually, as no. Well, around this time, I think. Dead James, Poet Society. James, uh, you're thinking of something else. James, yeah. James Earl Jones wasn't in Dead Poet Society. Eighty, but Dead Poet Society was '89. But James Earl Jones okay. wasn't in that. <laughs> I'm mixing this up. The one way he says, "I'll say this only once: a team is not a team if you don't give a damn about one another." But I'm that, getting up. That's there. not but Dead I Poet Society. Are you thinking of uh, My, Good Morning Vietnam? No, I don't think so. Don't Michael, think help! Michael, help us out here. Was in that. Uh, <laughs> I've got to stuck. Be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> this is not a trio of support. This is a James Earl Jones podcast. Yeah. For people. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, switching gears back to, so we kind of agree that the first was a classic, um, so moving on to the second one. Not, not the scariest, but a good start. The second uh-huh. Treehouse of Horror revolves around nightmares. It, it's they interesting. All, they all chow down on candy. In, in the first few yeah. Treehouse of Horror <laughs> episodes, there's actually a grounded in reality narrative to connect all the story, the three stories together, but they ditch that after, I think, the fourth or fifth season? Yeah, it wasn't in the fifth season. Or, yeah. yeah. Realistically, and you could say the third, I believe the third one is where it's an actual Halloween party and the fourth yes. is the, the wraparound. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. after season, after the third one, the fourth one on where they ditched the connecting narrative and they just, uh, D- did a free for all of sketches. So with like a few exceptions where there's like an opening or some sort of brief prologue segment, yes, but that's very rare. That's true. Um so yep. Trios of Horror 2, they eat a bunch of Halloween candy on Halloween and they all have nightmares. So Lisa's nightmare is uh about world peace. It's the monkey's paw one. Bart's nightmare is actually <laughs> a mind fuck and I in my person in all opinion, actually, no, wait, never mind, scratch it. I remember it's, it's seeing the picture in the episode guy, Bart just pointing at Homer because he's a jack-in-the-box. Yeah. Yeah, it's based on a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> yeah. As a lot of the original uh, <laughs> sort of segments were. There's so many too. Twilight Zone references in The Simpsons, but yeah, yeah Treehouse of Horror is yeah. where they can go nuts. The mm-hmm. other thing, um, my personal, the scariest one is Homer, the Homer's Nightmare, where Mr. Burns takes his brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one is real. That moment makes me feel real uncomfortable, especially the scene where he's literally like dr- drilling the, uh, plucking the brain out of his head, where he saws off his scalp, and mm. yeah, I feel eerie yeah. describing. I, th- this. I think that one's the creepiest yeah. for sure. Doesn't go for laughs so much. It, 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 it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Although I do like the end of Bart's nightmare, where like uh, Homer and Bart finally like get along and bond, yeah. and Bart just wakes up screaming. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, Bart's of all the nightmares, Bart's uh, Bart and Lisa's dream both have happy endings because the 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 monkey paw goes to Ned Flanders and Flanders orga- organizes yeah. wishes for world peace. Yeah, anyway. But the Simpson family is screwed. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say the Frankenstein one's the eeriest. Yeah, 
Uh, moving on to season three. Oh wait, what, what oh. do you what do you Michael and Josh think? Yeah, sorry. Got a little head. Season four too. I'm not really as familiar with. I haven't rewatched it in a long time. I mean, the narrative of it being themed around nightmares is okay, but I guess there's not anything that stands out too well. If I had to pick, I guess I'll go with Bart's, just because it's the one I can remember the most. Oh, yeah. 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 Power of being a jack-in-a-box is a very good visual gag. My, my favorite one... Power of fa- being a jack-something is not surprising. One of my favorite <laughs> uh, jokes from Bart's Nightmare is when Krusty's like, Here I am, kids! I walk 24 hours a day because of one special little boy! Let me stop! <laughs> now I'm gonna go to Sideshow Hell to see if he has any more wake up drugs. <laughs> Across Le- legal, yeah. legal uh, wake up drugs, or was it illegal? <laughs> illegal, Whatever. yeah. <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah, we can uh, move along. I suppose we're on to uh, Trailers of Horror three in season four. That's an annoying thing. Every uh, every episode of Trailers of Horror is like just behind. I- if you want to know what, you have to remember math. If you yeah. want to know which season uh, each Trials of Horror takes place in, sub- subtract uh, one number from uh, the ep- subtract the season it's in by one, and you have the episode number. I mean, it's not a pain in the ass, but it is a bit of a pain. And, in the ass. and it is something to point out. Um, <laughs> they call in the episode in every single TV guide and every single you know um, DVD. It's called Treehouse of Horror, and on Disney Plus it's called Treehouse of Horror, and on the Simpsons website it was called Treehouse of Horror, but when you actually see it on the screen, it's called The Simpsons Halloween Special. I do think they changed this much, much later. They did. Yeah, they did. But early, it started as The Simpsons Halloween Special. Hmm. Minor nitpick, but... Um, so the third one... The third one. The third one, like Josh said, it's a Halloween party, and they all tell stories. The first one is Clown Without Pity. This is a great one. Got a lot of memorable moments in it. (laughs) And there's also King Homer, which is a King Kong parody. Yeah. And Dial Z for Zombies! Dad, you killed the zombie Flanders. He was a zombie? zombie? (laughs) Show's over, Shakespeare! (laughs) Is this the end of zombie (laughs) Shakespeare? Ugh, zombies! Ugh, pretty as a picture. One of my favorite. What I really like about this episode, before I cast my vote for my favorite segment, is um, all three segments in here are still like kind of really relevant as like Halloween tropes. Like they've never stopped making Chucky movies since this came out. Yeah. There, there have been like three King Kong reboots in King recent Kong decades. Kong Island only a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, and the, and they've they've never stopped making zombie movies either. <laughs> so it's yeah. like. I, when I saw this recently, it's like, this could have come out, like, today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Was, what I was going to say is, is, like, it's actually very difficult for me to cast, like, one vote, because I think I love each of these equally, Yeah, to be honest. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to pick it's, this directly. It's, it's hard it's for the me. first Trials of Horror, where all three are on equal footing. Yeah, yeah. I agree, yeah. Uh, can I just, uh, lightning round, uh, spout off my favorite jokes? I already said that my favorite joke from Dial yeah. for Zombies is, uh, the Shakespeare one. Oh, yeah. Uh, then my favorite joke from Clown Without Pity is, uh, Marge, Marge, the doll's trying to kill me! The toast has been laughing at me! <laughs> uh, dark water! <laughs> <laughs> my favorite joke from King Homer is, uh... It wasn't hot dog-flavored water, though, was it? Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Uh, my favorite joke from King Homer was, um, Smithers, what do you think? I think women and semen don't mix, sir. We all know what <laughs> yeah. you think. Yeah. I always like the visual gag where, like, King Homer is climbing the Empire State Building and the guys flying the planes are like, eh, he's taking a sweet time getting up there. And he's not even, like, I don't know, like, 20 feet off the ground and he just falls back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, homie. Oh, homie. Uh, so... Well, what do you what do you think, guys? Do you think this is just an overall solid uh, installment? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, Clown Without Pity is my favorite. I'm gonna, uh, my favorite exchange, the whole like shopkeeper Homer thing. Take this object, but beware, it carries a terrible curse. Ooh, that's bad. But it comes with a big Froger. That's good. That's the Froger is also cursed. That's bad. But you get your choice of toppings. That's good. The toppings contain potassium benzoate. That's bad. Can I go now? <laughs> I'll go now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, that, moving on. I could never remember that whole segment, but yeah, that part was great. I looked it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that explains it. I want it to be accurate. Very good. Good. Very good. So, yeah, Trails of War 3, super solid. 
Superfly nice. TNT. Everyone knows. Very nice. I like. Oh, <laughs> how I, much? Oh, by the way, uh, I lied. Uh, t- effective Treehouse of Horror uh, five. Uh, they str- they dropped the continuing narrative because the fourth Treehouse of Horror uh, <laughs> come starts with Bart in an art gallery. It's a it's a take on the Night Gallery uh, series. Okay, and, and the Night Gallery. And so there's. Each Bart will point at a painting, and each painting tells a horrific story. The first painting is about the devil, and the episode is called "The Devil and Dan- and uh, Homer, Homer Simpson, Simpson. Ba- a parody of the Devil and Daniel Webster." The second one is "Terror at Five and a Half Feet," uh, also a parody of a Twilight Zone episode. Another Twilight Zone. Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet. Maybe we should and have a counter. Bart Simpson's Dracula as a parody of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, no. How, forget the counter, Lyle. Let's play a drinking game. I'm gonna go grab your crystal at vodka. Every time they parody Twilight <laughs> oh, Zone, God, take a no. shot. Uh, Let's see how yeah, wasted I'm you gonna... are by the end of this episode. I'm at, I'm at two shots now. <laughs> oh yeah. All Drink right. up, Buttercup. Um, out of all these episodes, I really like the Devil and Homer Simpson, but Bart Simpson's Dracula is pretty funny too. Um, the end is... of, of that last segment is just hilarious. Yeah. Why, we're all vampires. Yeah. Oh, I have a life outside this kitchen. My favorite joke from uh, all of them is, uh, Quick, we have to kill the boy! Hey, what? How'd you know he's a vampire? He's a vampire? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part's great. Um, in terms of... Uh, the funniest one to me is Bart Simpson's Dracula, but the scariest one that I find more scary than funny is Terror at Five and a Half Feet. Oh, yes. Yeah, the implications. Yeah. yeah. Bart gets It's like away. a legitimately tense episode. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it shows how the... the this is like the, one of the first times that the show's writers could actually mix horror and humor, like, brilliantly. So, kudos to them for that. Uh, my, fa- yeah, my, so Terra Five and a Half Feet's my favorite just cause, um, it's, uh, just cause of how tense it is. What's your favorite, guys? I love The Devil and Homer Simpson. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's the opening segment, but just, like, it basically tests Homer's love for donuts, <laughs> and the freaking, the, the trial thing, like, Ned as the devil picking the jury, it's like, the starting lineup of the 1976 Philadelphia Fly. It's like the mix of people is hilarious. The fact it's played for, it's played straight. Yeah. The deleted scene you see in 138th episode spectacular later. Well, I didn't win. Here's your pizza. But we did win. That's okay. The box is empty. <laughs> the the twist ending where Homer literally could bite off more than he can chew and became a donut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> Thanks to the, mm. the donut that had his presses. It's also the beginning of the whole, like, you know, selling your soul narrative, which would come back and Bart sells his soul in Season 7, so... That's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. Season 7, wow. Yeah, well, um, so, uh, moving on, the, I think the crown jewel of the any... The best of all of them. Any, well, yeah, we talked about this in our last there's, episode. There are, effective this year, I think there's... How, wait, if it's, if there's... 31. 31. 31. So, there are 30, effective this year, there are 31 Treehouse of Horror episodes, but this one, out of all of them, I think is the crown jewel. Uh, yep. Three, yep. um, three movies are parodied, and the results are both, are, an, are a perfect balance of hilarious and horrifying. The Shining is parodied with a segment called The Shinning. Shh, you want to get sued? The <laughs> A Sound of Thunder is parodied with Time and Punishment. Well, that, that's not a movie. That's a short story. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Soylent Green, which was a movie, is parodied with Nightmare Cafeteria. Oh, goddamn. So, uh, let's start with the obvious. Um, I honestly didn't see The Shining until this quarantine business started. Uh, it's the best which, movie to watch on quarantine. It really oh is. Um, and uh, <laughs> it, it, You're fortunate. Yeah, it's just as... Um, it's it's an uneasy movie to watch, but it's masterfully done. Yes, it's. We, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Stanley Kubrick treated people like shit to, get, to make this movie. S- sorry, Shelley Duvall. Um, so... The parody of how they take jabs at The Shining is hilarious. Um, and to be honest, I've seen this skit more than I've seen The Shining. But now that I've seen The Shining, this skit is now ten times funnier because I just know every single thing they did to take jabs at this masterpiece of a movie. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's hard for me to pick one because um, I'd say Nightmare Cafeteria is definitely the, 
the scariest one of the bunch. Just... It may be one of the scariest segments of any of any uh, episode. It's fucking gross, man. Like, oh my god, they're trying. They're, they're so hungry when they want to eat these kids, and they chase after them with yeah. knives and crap, and they get flung into a blender by the end. Oh. Uh, and then, like, Time and Punishment. I think that one's the funniest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just love when Homer goes ham and kills yeah. a bunch of yeah. dinosaurs. Don't touch anything! I'll touch whatever I feel like! No. It's just basically like a funnier version of the butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah. and I love the part where yeah. he, he lands in a picturesque uh, uh, world where it's like, everything's fine, Patty and Selma are dead, uh, he doesn't have to work or something. There's all these positives, and it's like, okay, great, hand me a donut. What's a donut? Oh! He runs off and it starts <laughs> raining donuts. Oh, it's raining again and all the donuts fall out. Later on, later. <laughs> this is indeed a disturbing universe. Oh, yeah, and uh, Groundskeeper yeah. Willie uh, keeps getting an axe to the back. He's getting axed and off. Oh, I'm bad at this. But I think the shinning is like the perfect balance between funny and scary yeah. to me. Yeah. I don't know. It has the unsettling yeah. presence of The Shining, but with all the clever jokes and references put in. Um, my favorite, yeah. my favorite joke from Nightmare Cafeteria is when uh, Miss Krabappel is all fat and there's so few students left, and it says homework: eat a stick of butter. Since so many kids have been put on permanent detention. I'm go- we decided to merge all students into one small class. I trust there are no objections. And then Wendell is so scared that he drops his pencil on the floor and she's like, Detention! I felt, I felt sad for him. Yeah. Like, you I, feel I legitimately bad for these kids. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a joke, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's crazy. I just like the way how Edna is, like, so out of it. And it's like, yeah, they're finding any excuse to give uh, kids attention just so they can drunk off of young flesh. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, but, yeah. And then, the of course... The scariest thing of all is the fog that turns people inside out. Oh, God damn. We didn't even get to that. <laughs> Holy shit. That's and that's an eerie way to end an episode. That's the gross. I think that's the grossest thing. It's not it's even a sketch. Kind of a it's... Out, though, because you think Bart, Lisa, and Milhouse are going to die in the giant blender, and then it sounds like, oh, it's just like the Bart's Nightmare from Treehouse of Horror Two, where everything's fine. Psych. Oh yeah. yeah, that's one of the cruelest psychs in the show's history. Like not just and the, then they the just Halloween do a musical number, like everything's fine. Yeah, and not just Halloween history. That in the show's history, I think that's one of the cruelest fake outs they've ever mm-hmm. done. Okay, so now that that... What, what, are, what are your my thoughts, favorite? Michael? Yeah. Um, yeah, I I adore all three segments in here. I think I might have to give it to The Shinning by oh, yeah, Adair. Shining. I think that it's um an incredibly well-crafted parody of, yeah. the, of the film. Like, uh, it, it's kind of mind-boggling how they do it, because <clears throat> the whole point of The Shining is, like, it's a very kind of slow burn towards the action, but... Somehow in like eight, ten minutes, I they give you this Cliff Notes version of the film that is just like psychotic and hilarious and incredible all at once. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I've always admired that episode for that reason. Uh, uh, very, very close second would be Time and Punishment because I also think that, that the rhythm of that episode is just hilarious. The sort of like, oh no, what's going to happen now with the... the uh, the rewriting of history and time and stuff like that. It's just like such an enjoyable segment like of television that... for me. But but I true I, I do agree with your sentiments. I think this is probably the very best Trials of Horror and the fact that like all three segments are home run is just like what's oh, yeah. There's uh, a there's a theory out there that time and punishment is is the reason why so many why the Simpsons timeline is so fluctuant. Like how, I mean, like none of the, these are canon anyway, so who knows? Yeah. Who cares? No, yeah, like, they're not like supposed in, to be canon. Well, in the actual show, it's, it's, like it, it explains away things like the '90s show episode where like uh, Homer and Marge we don't talk didn't about have, that one. <laughs> didn't have kids, or um, the principal, principal and the popper episode. Like how all these things happen so and are quickly erased. That oh. episode is the reason why they The Simpsons cheats chronology so yeah, much. Yeah, and how they can get away with it sometimes. Oh wow. That's, oh, just, that's, that's, just, that's, that's just the Our theory. theory logic. Yeah. Whatever, it's a uh, cartoon. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up, nerds. All right, um, okay. moving on. We are at uh, episode six. Attack six of the 50-foot eyesores, seven. a parody of the attack of the 50-foot women, 
A woman, uh, Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace, a p obvious parody of Nightmare on Elm Street, and Homer Cubed, uh, which is a parody of Little Girl Lost. Another Twilight Zone episode. Ding! Hey, it's like, yeah. it's like uh, <laughs> something to do on that Twilight show about that zone. Speaking of which, Bucko, I'm getting the vodka. You're taking shots. Ow. <laughs> My <laughs> brain. Okay. We're going to see how drunk you get by the end of this episode. Oh. Uh. Okay, <laughs> this is a bad idea. But okay. well, at least at least you're at home. Yeah, I can't hurt anyone yeah. other than myself <laughs> or me. Oh, that's true. Get no, he can still hurt you. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna I do. Say. Half shots. One. Okay. Okay, so I'm up to three now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, let, you, we'll let you uh, get away with headshot with the half shots. Don't worry. Oh, God, I can't even imagine what headshots are like. Oh, okay, headshot. I'm up to the second one. Mm. Okay. You you gonna be okay? Uh, no. <laughs> That's some nice ASMR though. Uh, yeah. This <laughs> this is Lyle. I'm taking shots of vodka. Join me. I take the I take the shot glass up to my lips <laughs> and chug it down and cough profusely because it tastes like fucking poison. Oh god. Mm. So. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm good. So. Uh, this uh, is a bad uh, idea. So. Uh, my, what Michael and Josh? Let's mm. have you two start this time. Which which one out of Attack of Fifty Foot Eyesores, Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace, and Homer Cubed? Which one's your favorite? Um, I'm gonna go with Nightmare. I'm gonna go with Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace. I think, yeah, similar to what I was saying about the shitting. I think it's just like a really smartly kind of crafted parody of a specific thing. And yeah, I, I um. That line that Kirk Van Houten says about uh, Mailhouse having two spaghetti meals in one day is like one of the funniest. <laughs> one of the funniest lines. In while Wo show. while <laughs> Willie is burning alive. <laughs> yeah. Two Wait, spaghetti meals Kirk, a day. Kirk is a hilarious, uh, arguably underrated character. I think everything he says is hysterical. But you know, when he's just when he's just standing there complaining about this the the cafeteria lunches, it, it just kills me every time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Josh, what about you? <laughs> you know what, I'm going to agree with Michael and say Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace. As much as I love the premise of Homer being stuck in basically a 3D world in Homer Cubed, uh, I feel like that is the strongest overall episode. And the fact that it's a brilliant send-up of Nightmare on Elm Street, which is still a beloved horror franchise to this day. And once yeah. again, it's Willie really getting the screw job, which they seem to like to do a lot thus far. Yeah. <laughs> but it's done really well, and of course... Maggie once again is underrated in this episode. She plays a pivotal role, but it's it's a really great time. Yeah. Yeah. This was right this episode aired right after Who Shot Mr. Burns Part Two and the big mystery was revealed. So it kinda of feels like Maggie oh, yeah. is, is kinda of like a, the Deus Ex Machina to every like horrifying situation. Well even in the movie for crying out loud. Yeah. Maggie! What a horrible little accident you turned out to be. <laughs> so <Salute. laughs> Um, I would just like to say that Attack of the 50 Foot Eyesores does have the last bit at the end when, when Lisa and Paula and Kasing just don't look. That's just a little bit of a. I wouldn't say it's a throwaway, but it's just a little funny musical yeah. thing in there. Now, which one? Like did lot. someone on this show meet Paul Anka? I, I think I did years ago, brief aside. It was when I was well, going to uh, California on a family trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I remember, yes. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, it's. All right. Uh, I'm gonna do. Have... Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to agree with Michael and Josh. Uh, a Nightmare on, Ever on Evergreen Terrace is probably my favorite too. Um, but we be Re Lyle. What's your favorite? Um, you know what? I, I'm gonna have to go with Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace too. I like all three. Of these. I like all three I... of these episodes <laughs> a lot. And Homer three is really fucking cool. Uh, I like seeing like how they were able to pull off a fully rendered 3D Homer. In a yeah. in a prime time show. Now you know what's blowing my fucking mind right now. I'm looking at the air date uh, that this episode aired, October 29th, nineteen ninety five. That do was a you, good year. It was a great year for CGI and uh, media because do you know what came out in theaters a less than a month after this episode aired? You Toys. got a coincidence in me. Toy you got a coincidence <laughs> in me. Toy Story. Yes. So the Simpsons beat Toy Story. To uh, CGI revolutionary tech on yeah, screen. Yeah, but then 
it's Spoilers, significantly so shorter. From that movie yes. In this year's Treehouse of Horror. And significantly shorter. And the CG they mm-hmm. actually used uh, was on par with some of Pixar's earlier shorts, like Wally B and Tin Toy. Well, it was a little better, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. I like, and the fact yeah. of the matter is, they were even able to, like, enter interlace uh cgi imagery into an, a real life uh into live action footage yeah, yeah homer ends is... up in sherman oaks and then he wanders into that erotic store yeah, yeah. i think oh, yeah. it's i think it's the only thing i don't like about the episode it kind of just stops and yeah. it doesn't really like have any note to end on yeah. i mean it does leave you wanting more and that you want to see a little more of homer getting accustomed to our world in that sense yeah well uh, I feel like once he sees the, the the implication is that once he sees the erotic cake shop, he's going to be just fine. <laughs> oh shit! Homer three <laughs> is based on a Twilight Zone episode called Little Girl Lost. That's so that's four. Yeah. No, no, no. That's I think that was in the three shot. Was that my third shot? Hold on, let me check. Me... To serve man, <laughs> living doll. Uh, technically, Night Gallery is part of Twilight Zone. Nightmare on twenty thousand feet. That's an episode. Um. Little girl lost. That's the fourth shot. Okay. Okay. And, this, and we Why did I do off. this to myself? Why couldn't I just? Uh, I have to warn you. Uh, Treehouse of Horror Eight also has another one from a Twilight Zone segment. I know. <laughs> the, the okay. okay. <laughs> so now that on that note, uh, let's continue. Uh, uh, the thing and I, uh, Genesis Tub, and Citizen Kang. Hey, now, don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. Now, for those of you uh, Americans going to the polls on Tuesday, just remember, Josh, do you want to do the honors in quoting this, my friend? Don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. You oh. said that. No. It, it's a two-party. It doesn't matter. You have to, it's a two-party system. You have to choose one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, America. Uh, the uh, Which one's your favorite out of uh, The Thing and I and Janice Stubb and Citizen Kang? I really like um, The Thing and I for some bizarre what, reason. What happens in that one? That's the one where Dr. Hibbert comes and reveals that Bart had a long-lost mutant brother uh, that the Simpsons yeah. kept in the attic for, like, eight years. Hugo! Uh, yeah. 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 boy. Is that really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really like that one. I don't know why. He actually is. I, I believe he's mentioned in a few episodes since this, so he's technically canon. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Even though these episodes aren't supposedly yeah. but uh that's funny. i'm torn between the thing and i and citizen kang to be honest because yeah. like the thing and i hugo is basically oh if like bart is meant to be a hellraiser hugo is like if that person if that persona took a physical form yeah like if and, bart and was citizen a demon. Kang is too real yeah okay uh michael what about your favorite what i uh, I think I'm probably going to cast my vote for the thing, and I, um, I, I'm looking at the Wikipedia sort of attribution here, and it doesn't seem like it's a parody of anything in particular. It's not. I think no. it's kind of cool. It's just like. Oh, a well, I thought of... it was going to be a, a spoof of the King and I. That's <laughs> just the name. What? But yeah. Well, yeah. That yeah. that's like an that's like an art form in itself, like the the crafting of Simpsons titles that are always like a parody of something, even oh. if it's not parroting the actual thing. In every I, episode, I, no less. I love when they do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of, I, I just think it's like a, it's not the most original premise in the world, but it, it's like a, within the context of Trios horror original kind of story, and it's just like yeah. creepy and weird and fun, and yeah, it makes me laugh a lot. When yeah. Dr. Hibbert holds up the picture frame to Hugo and just punches him in the face, like yeah. that's one of the funniest visual gags in the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um... Uh... Lyle, what's your favorite? Um, well, not the Genesis tubs. <laughs> I don't mind that one. Oh, that's a Twilight Zone reference too. Okay, bottoms up. <laughs> I uh, want to. I feel like this was a bad. I'm I, sorry I, to. I, I mean, hate you, Evan. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry <laughs> to. Regret this. You know what, guys? It's okay. Let's I just. Think we're, I think we're. Safe. I think that's the end of it. Yeah, that. we're not going past season because I feel like if Oof. this is not good. Yeah, I'm getting a little queasy. Uh, anyways, um. <laughs> I don't like the Genesis tub because it starts off pretty interesting, but it ends on like another. It just stops. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go with Citizen Kang, even though I'm not really fond of politics. But the sheer uh, bonkers nature of the episode, where like both aliens have to be now. This. Could you imagine being soaked in rum by aliens? 
No. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, that was during the Clinton uh, re-election campaign of '96. So uh, and his political, I can't. The name of his Republican counterpart Bob is Bob Dole. Bob Dole. That's when Bob Dole and uh, Clinton. Clinton Dole versus Clinton '96. Uh, Clinton won that election. So uh, there's that. Uh, not, I don't know why I start off on that tangent, but whatever. So, uh, I feel like we can move on. We said all we can say. Yeah. Um, not really one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. If I'm being so honest. moving on, uh, uh, here we go. This is where it kind of starts to dip in quality. Um, are you kidding me? No, the Omega <laughs> man fly versus fly and easy bake oven. I say that because you, why don't we start with Lyle off? What we, uh, Lyle said has his least favorite one in this. Uh, he knows uh, what his least favorite is. Um, well, I'll talk about my favorite first. Uh, I'm a huge Cronenberg fan. So fly versus fly easily gets my vote. Um, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Bart. <laughs> oh no. All the shit, all the shenanigans Homer gets with a teleportation device. Is fucking gold. Yeah. I love how he puts the thing up to the toilet and goes all the way down next to the couch while Marge is sitting there knitting and decides to take a leak. And Homer and Marge is like, Homer, no! He's like, oh, now Bart. And Bart wants to use the thing. He's like, no, Bart, this is a highly schmamificated uh, uh, machine. You gotta use it responsibly or else. <laughs> like, Kablamo! Ow, someone hit me right in the face! It was your mother. <laughs> oh, and he like takes takes a bunch of cat ear medicine by accident and drinks it down. No, nah, like the, this is my this is one of the funniest episodes I've seen. And like I like the, the ending fly is, design. The ending's hilarious. I like the fly design too. That's pretty cool. I like how Bart's a menace as a fly. Yeah. Even pestering yeah. a poor spider that just wanted to eat. For the day. I, I love um, and then uh, by the end of the episode he's like fixed up and then Homer's like Bart I, sh- I should have done something I should have done a long time ago I'll teach you to mess with my machine ah! and just like the shooting he's chasing him around with an axe again yeah uh, the whole um, I'm gonna have to go with fly versus fly for this I also one. really like the home mega man uh, too. that's a good that's one. a nice that's an interesting sort of like Dark apocalypse twist. Yeah. yeah, I just love seeing Homer dance naked in a church. What Wait a minute! I, I just realized that's a precursor to the Last Man on Earth, that Will Forte show. Actually, it's a parody of the of the Omega Man. Yeah, the Omega Man. Well, it could also be seen as like that. Also, was inspiration for that. Show. Yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, they typically parody one uh, media per sketch. Well, the the Omega Man is a book that has inspired several properties: The Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price, the Omega. Oh, Man. that was based on I Am Legend and like I Am that Legend. Movie yeah. that, that all, guy was in. Yeah, it's all the same movie. premise. You know, the genie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it's all based on a book, basically. Lyle, uh, do you want to say? So I want to disclose my. Le- I, I do not like Easy Bake Coven. Really, it's a very dull way to end a pretty solid episode overall. Mm. It, it does kind of remind me. It. it does kind of uh, remind me of how fun it was to go trick or treating. But other than that, it's not funny, and it's really like a. Dull... Remember when you could go trick or treating? <laughs> yeah, that was a good, uh, a good fifteen years ago. Yeah. Hey, but now you know what? You could be like Jack and Sally if you want, and you'll have Halloween on Christmas. In the oh, night, shit. we'll wish this never wish this ends. Never end. We'll wish this never ends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wrong voice. Um, so <laughs> I know I, I got two Tom hopped up. <laughs> okay, so uh, Michael and Josh, what are your favorites? Uh, ho- the Omega Man. Okay, that's, that's a fair. Good one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Uh, by the way, uh, it's worth mentioning that Homer would dance naked in the church and pray <laughs> anything like. Several seasons later. Oh, I mean, it doesn't take much for Homer to dance naked. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael, um, what about you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast my vote for Fly versus Fly. Um, That's uh, a good one. To, so I think that works pretty well on two levels because I would have seen this episode as a kid, but now having seen the Cronenberg movie and liking and appreciating Cronenberg cinema, it works pretty well too. Um, so I I just think it's 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 a good parody because it is a it is a good parody of the thing it's making fun of, but it, yeah. it, it definitely stood on its own as a kid. Like I remember thinking it was just hilarious and weird and creepy and funny as a kid, and yeah. uh, and now now that I know the context uh, much much later, it's just it 
it, it, it's very, very good. I still right need to see the 1950s fly. <laughs> I hear that's pretty good, too. Yeah. yeah. The original. Uh, All right. So, yeah, season eight. Or episode eight, season nine. Pretty great. Uh, Next up. Yeah. Uh, we're on to uh, episode nine with Hell to Pay. Hell to Pay, the one with Snake's hair that uh, corrupts Homer's brain. The terror on <laughs> the terror of Tiny Toon, where uh, they run around uh, inside an itchy and scratchy episode, and Starship Poopers, where it turns out that Maggie's an alien. And they get the hilarious Jerry Springer sketch where they have to <laughs> fight over the who the real father is. <laughs> I'm so fucking embarrassed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I personally, um, I'm gonna go for this one. I'm gonna go with uh, Hell to Pay, uh, just because mm -hmm. um, I love how uh, how hysterical it is and how, f how terrifying and funny it is at the same time to see Homer be possessed by a criminal uh, through a surgically a surgical hair implant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the way he like punches the wig after he rips it off <laughs> when it's attached to Bart's face. Yeah. Diane, stop hitting me. Like, stop punching me, you idiot. Idiot, why you little guy? <laughs> yeah. It's almost like the symbiote from Spider-Man 3. A little bit, yeah. Now I'm imagining Snake's hair is venom. Thanks. Uh, I like being bad. It makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been a good Eddie venom Brock. Snake's voice. Hey, hey Never woo. <laughs> what do you can't kill? <laughs> hey, Parker. Oh, my spidey senses are tingling. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, that's our snake's snake venom. He would have been a better venom than that's, Tober Grace. That's enough. <laughs> um, yeah, so you like Hell to Pay? Um, if I had to pick one, um, I kind of like Starship Poopers a bit, but I like Hell to Pay a lot more. It almost reminds me of that uh, Krusty Doll one where the living doll is just like this tiny thing that's trying to kill everyone. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Um... Yeah, Hell to Pay. Kind of, kind of, kind of violent in some aspects. The way that he kills off all his victims. Yeah. Apu gets shoved in a squishy machine, and Wiggum's being interviewed, and he's drinking a slurp, a slushy, yeah. or sorry, a squishy. And uh, he's like, "Uh, well, he, the main thing is he died peacefully." Uh, I'm not so sure about that, Chief. Uh, Lou, when were you gonna tell me that he was in there? Ah, he keeps drinking the damn squishy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hell to Pay is probably my favorite of the bunch. Um, so, the ne uh, Michael, Josh, what about you? I'm, I'm inclined to agree. I mean, Hell to Pay is the best one overall, though. The part of the terror of Tiny Toon where Bart and Lisa fall into the soup that Reaches and Kathy Lee are making, that's kind uh, of like a nice, you know, it's like Homer Cued when you have, like, actual live action with the CGI, but this is like yeah. the animation of the show with live action. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty cool, actually. Uh, rest in peace, Regis. What a time capsule, back when Regis was, like, around. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm also going to go with How to Pay. I think that, that's Animus. very strong and hilarious and okay. just, like, absurd episode, but I, I do want to give the Terror of Tiny Toon some credit, because I think it's just, like, such... An interesting premise, like the idea of falling into a TV show. Like, as yeah. a as a kid who watched a lot of TV, TV and just like let his imagination run wild, I remember seeing that, just thinking like, how cool that would be. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's it's got a bit of a horrific bent to it in this particular instance, but it, it's a really cool premise to me. Yeah. yeah no, they did. Um, not, uh, they're all pretty yeah. well done episodes. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the terror of Tiny Toon walked so that channel chases could run. If you remember that Fairly Odd Parents special. Uh, no. It was where basically uh, Timmy and his and uh, Wanda and Cosmo are inside the TV. Like, to, as Vicky ends up inside the TV, so they have to, like... It's a, big, it's a big thing, but the whole idea of, like, characters being sucked inside the TV and having to navigate through all these, like, crazy things... Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's good. So now we're on. I guess. I guess we're kind of on. We're not. We're not gonna go through absolutely every single trios before. We just left the first. Uh, we're doing the first ten. So, we're doing the first ten. Oh. And then we're gonna do this tenth one, and then we're gonna go into. Um, Homer Drive. Into uh, Homer Drive. Homer <laughs> Drive. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. Yeah. We're going to Homer Drive. Yeah. yeah. And we'll go into, like, individual, like, highlights from the later seasons. Yeah, because there's, there's too oh, much yeah. to cover. There's just too gonna... much to cover, and, like, not all of it is, like, you know, yeah. a must-watch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sounds good. Episode 10 of Trias of Horror. 
We got I Know What You Diddly Illy Did, which is a I Know What You Did Last Summer parody. Desperately Seeking Zena. Zena. I hate when people spell things with X's. Pissing me off. And then Life's a Glitch and Then You Die. I remember Life's a Glitch, Then You Die being legitimately scary. I kind of... I'm not going to lie, I kind of hate this episode. Oh yeah, so it took ten seasons. Ten seasons, this is like the first It's a little off kilter. Out of all the skits, the only one I like is not even like a horror skit, it's just like a superhero skit, basically. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll go first. My pick would be um, Desperately... um, Xing, seeking X, Xena. X, uh, desperately this z- is, seeking Xena. This is the one where our, damn. they have to fight the Collector. Yeah, not Lisa and Bart become superheroes out of nowhere. Stretch and... Dude and Clobber Girl. Stretch yeah. Dude and Clobber Girl. Stretch Dude and Clobber Girl. That's yeah. all I remember. Yeah. Worst reenactment <laughs> ever. And then, um... <laughs> So, uh, I don't remember too much about Lysa Glitch Then You Die. I just remember it being very scary. I did think it was remember funny. when Y2K was the worst thing you had to worry about? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the only thing I liked about Lysa Glitch is that Homer and Bart are stuck on the short bus with, like, every single one of the worst celebrities imaginable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like Rosie O'Donnell and Pauly Shore and Tom Arnold and Courtney Love. Yeah. Everyone, everyone <laughs> hates. <laughs> what, what I think is hilarious about that episode is life's a glitch is that everyone in that uh all the celebrities are just kind of played by like sort of stock simpsons voice actors they yeah. get the kind of the supporting cast to kind of parody a few people Actually, but i think tom, tom arnold showed up yeah that, that's what i was gonna say uh, tom arnold in, inexplicably shows up for like a two-line cameo where he just makes fun of himself <laughs> yeah, yeah. guys gotta guys gotta work yeah um, um I, I like that episode. I like that segment. Um, I agree that this is probably not the best in the show's history, but um, my personal vote would probably be for I Know What You Did did Italy Italy It. Right. Um, just because I like, I like the movie parodies, and I think this does a pretty good job of just putting Ned Flanders, who's always hilarious in this weird <clears throat> scenario, and... <laughs> This just the left field revelation that he's like a werewolf all along is really funny. That came out of so. left field. There's also uh, he would also come back uh, as a, a suspected killer or a, 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 a alleged killer in the Ned Zone uh, several seasons later. Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So uh, I'm not sure what my favorite is. I'm gonna say desperately seeking Zine is my favorite. Uh, for the sake of posterity, because, yeah. You know what, I agree. Just because, I mean, Lucy Lawless was still big with Xena and Hercules at the time, yeah. and it also launched the Stretch Dude and Clobber Girl sort of alter egos, which did still persist in some way. I mean, if you've ever played the Simpsons game, one of the power-ups is Lisa does become Clobber Girl. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so it, it's kind of around. I'm not, but it does kind of date itself because, of course, the collector has the lightsaber from episode one, so it's already dated. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, Life's a Glitch is kind of dated on its own. But you know, uh, as a as a nitpick, the fact that Homer and Bart would Bart would rather like launch themselves into space to kill themselves versus just going into the sun. Yeah. Eh. Yeah, that was kind of a bleak. I'm not ending. the greatest. Yeah. That's a very bleak ending. I agree. Yeah. Now, what I noticed about after season 10, all the tri- for, for a while, the Trials of Horror episodes start premiering in no- on November dates. I have no clue why that is. I, 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 know why. I know why. I know why. Why is it, Michael? It is actually because it is a, it is a Fox scheduling decision because baseball. Um, baseball. Yeah, that's exactly it. World Series of Baseball would always air on those nights and they would uh... bump the regular programming. Yeah, I think I read something. They also did that with football, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and they bad. did that with uh, this year's uh, episode. They did it with this year's Trio Support because the National League Championship Series decided to go to a seventh game. But fortunately, they did it last minute, and City TV chose not to get the memo. I, I, I actually remember as a kid, um, like, we would throw on the TV at, like, like maybe, like, 5 p.m., and I would anxiously be awaiting, like, an 8 p.m. Simpsons episode. And there would always be that sort of tension of, like, is the episode going to air tonight? Because will this game be done? (laughs) (laughs) 
So sometimes it's preemptive and they know that they're, that there is a game, so they're not going to show a new show, right? But I actually remember having that like feeling as a kid, like really, really just wanting to get to the football game so I could watch The Simpsons. Yeah. I would remember seeing on the website SNPP, which I think used to be called The Simpsons Archive, or maybe it is called that, I would see yeah. sometimes with upcoming episodes, it would say episode preempted due to a World Series game or an NFL game or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that too. <laughs> okay, so... Now that we've moved on, covered the first 10 seasons, uh, let's talk about everything post season 10. Well, not everything, like, let's talk well, about like, let's some Let's talk about some highlights. Um, yeah. I personally like Reaper Madness. Uh, that's the one where, uh, the Gr- Death, aka Grim Reaper, goes after Bart. Homer clocks him with a bowling ball and has to assume the role of the Grim Reaper. So he goes around killing people whose time has come, but then he has to kill Marge. And getting out of how he gets out of it is really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a class. Yeah. My favorite joke is how he gets out of uh, killing Marge. Uh, how did yeah. that, that one go? He he basically kills Patty and slaps a half of Marge's hair on Patty and delivers the corpse to God under a blanket to trick him. <laughs> If any of you guys pick a Twilight Zone episode, um, you're not getting, uh, you're not getting, well, you're not getting you a Christmas card. You can meet me card. later, but I'm going with one now. Yeah. All right, well, you're not getting a Christmas card. Ironically, card from the same, uh, ironically, also from Chaos 414, Stop the World, I Want to Goof Off. Now, that's not a parody of Clock Stoppers. That is specifically a no, parody. No, 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 no. It says right here, in a parody of the Twilight Zone episode, a kind of stopwatch yeah. and the movie Clock Stoppers. Okay. Why somebody sh- added I thought that, we agreed- which is always possible. Wait, I thought we agreed that you're not, no more shots, because there's too many. Right, you don't have to. I'm just saying, I genuinely enjoy this segment. <laughs> All right, because... how, about, how about this? I'll pick, a tri- I'll pick a Twilight Zone episode, and you have a Twilight Zone episode. I'll take my final shot. We both talk about the Twilight Zone. Yeah. For God's sake, it's no more Twilight Zone. I officially hate the name Twilight Zone. Because no, look, he... if you just pretend Martin Milhouse goof off with Freezing Time to First Date by Blink-182, then it's not a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, I'll just think of Clock Stoppers. Huh. That movie's cool. Fair enough. That was my first thought, because like, as a kid that, that actually did, like, saw Clock Stoppers in theaters, this would have been around 2001 or 2002 when it came out, I kind of like this segment where they get a stopwatch... Uh, through an advertisement in an old comic book, and then they accidentally break it, so time remains frozen. So it's sort of like the Omega Man, where no one's really around, so Bar and Mill has to do everything they've always wanted to do. But yeah. then it's, they realize, oh, we actually have to fix things again, and uh, they finally do repair the watch. It takes them 15 years, but uh, as sort of everything sort of goes back to normal, with yeah. a surprise Oscar yeah. De La Hoya guest starring. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's a good I guess I'll go next, just so I can top off this Twilight Zone retrospective. Uh, I'm going to pick the one in um, season uh, 17, uh, episode 16. Uh, I've grown a costume to your face, which is a parody of the masks. Oh, um, I love that. It's basically one where like everyone's having a fun time. Everyone in the town is celebrating Halloween. And, um, yeah, it turns out the, the winner of the costume party was an actual witch. She got angry that everyone was like, oh, well, you don't deserve the costume because you technically are a witch. So she um, magically turns everyone into the costumes that they're wearing. And yeah. I like it. It opens the door for a lot of references and a lot of, like, jokes. Bumblebee Man is literally a bee. <laughs> Grandpa turns into an ape. Uh, Dr. Hibbert turns into Dracula, not Blackula, because I don't want to... <laughs> uh, I'm kind of glad they never went that route, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Well, well, Wiggum accidentally called him Blackula, and he had to file like a, a racist claim in his middle drawer of his uh in his uh in his filing cabinet. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that one's just a really fun one. I like seeing all the. I like Apu D two too. That's a yeah, good. Okay. That's a great pun. I can go either way. Boop, boop, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Uh, that's a fun one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Shot away. Final shot. Oh. Wikipedia is weird. It's saying that's also a parody of Halloween Town 2. <coughs> really? I haven't seen that one yet. I'm sure that says interpretation, which, side note, Halloween Town movies are pretty good. I like them, yeah. I've seen the first one a couple times. Yeah. 
trying to think the second one's all right. Um, my next one from Treehouse of Horror 16 is You Gotta Know When to Golem, which is a parody of The Golem, which is actually a silent horror partially lost film from Germany from 1915. Here oh, yeah. I was thinking it was just the Jewish guy talking about Jewish things. <laughs> no, it's an actual monster. <laughs> On Halloween. Basically, yeah. Bart finds a golem, and they hang out, but obviously the town doesn't like the golem, and apparently he ends up marrying a female golem, voiced by Fran Drescher. And made a completely out of clay dough. I, I played with play dough. That was yeah. kind of cool. It's like, it's actually kind of combining Jewish folklore with like a Halloween story in a really interesting way. And again, it's another one of those episodes like, like Father Like Clown, Today I Am a Clown, uh, where you see a bit more of Krusty's heritage and I think the golem does show up in another episode or two past this. I could be wrong, but I feel like I've seen him at some points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think there is a callback to him in some later seasons. But yeah, to, to what you're saying, Josh, I have a sort of a weird soft spot for Krusty-centric episodes. This is not related to Trials of War, but I feel like whenever they flesh out his backstory, it's like they, they really get the sad clown sort of story trope. They do it really, really well. Yeah. When are they gonna yeah. do a Trios of Horror Joker parody? You know what? Yeah, or or it or Pennywise or whatever. Yeah. I feel like if they did a parody of Joker, like it would be so they could. I feel like they that could be like their one time they could actually have Krusty drop an f bomb, like a real f bomb on the show. They can't get away with that. <laughs> I mean, no. it would, if it they would censored it, maybe. Yeah, maybe they'd have to censor it. Yeah, and then have the f bomb go on the DVD. No. Yeah, this ain't no Family Guy. No, you know what? That's assuming they do DVDs anymore. They stopped a long time ago. Well, yeah, they kind of did. I feel here, but here's the thing: like, uh, if the, the the Simpsons Halloween specials ever parody Joker, the cast writes itself. Krusty would be Arthur Fleck. Uh, no, Krusty just dances in the subway station yeah, in Springfield. Tommy, um, uh, <laughs> Bruce, uh, Bru- uh, Thomas Wayne would be played by I think either Skinner or Mr. Burns, and uh, Kent Brockman would be uh, Murray Franklin. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Agnes Skinner would be uh, Arthur Fleck's mom. Wait, but but enough about writing the, the uh, segment in two years from now. Let's not. Yeah, let's not give the writers any ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, I went. Uh, uh, Josh went. What about you, Michael? You got a. Highlight? Yeah, I've got. I, I picked out a couple here. But yeah, I we'll, we'll, go, we'll them. rotate and go through them. Yeah, all. We'll, we'll rotate. We'll rotate. So yeah. the first one I'll talk about is uh, the Ned Zone from Trio Support 15. I think uh, somebody name dropped it just a few minutes ago, but yeah. um, big Stephen King fan. This is a great story. This is a great movie. Also a Cronenberg movie. One thing, yeah, also Cronenberg. <laughs> one, one thing I really like about Trios of Horror in general, just the kind of overarching thing, is that you have so much like freedom with the characters. You can write them completely against type, and it still kind of like works. So the, the fact that this is like a Ned-centric story where he just turns into a completely different person is something I really, really like. They give him like a really compelling arc that you would never see inside of the show. With the exception of a uh, Hurricane Flanders or Hurricane Ned or whatever, where he completely loses his mind, we never see Ned this like angry and disturbed, and I I just like that so much. And it, again, with other King parodies the show has done, it's like a sort of Cliff Notes version of the story, but it is like such an effective parody. And I feel like if you're a fan of a thing, and you can still appreciate. The, the parody of it as being like effective and not not like derivative or not or not like not like a lame duck kind of parody like I, I feel like stuff like that is really really strong and I, I think that this is a really really good later era episode yeah 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 uh the next episode uh, I'm just gonna knock off the last two that I want to talk about uh, because I don't have much to say to them I just really like a couple jokes from them um the, uh, they're both from Trios of Horror 19. Um, it shows that the show, at this late in the series, still could, you know, get, deliver a laugh at the Halloween episodes. Um, yeah. The the two episodes that I want to talk about from Trios of Horror 19 are um, 
how to get ahead in advertising. This is where Homer uh, be inadvertently kills Krusty the Clown, I, and uh, some shady agency wants to take him uh, on to assassinate celebrities. And what's really creepy is to, this was, episode premiered in 2008, and it predicted two celebrity, two of the celebrities you see him kill actually do die in the next decade. Um, he offs Neil Armstrong, who died in 2012, and he also offs Prince, who died in 2016. So I just thought that was... You want to talk about how The Simpsons has a nasty habit of predicting the future? Uh, there's something eerie yeah. about the fa those two that he kills. Yeah. Set to the tune of Talking Heads. Yes. Psycho, psycho killer, qu'est-ce que c'est? Yeah, and... <laughs> much better. And then, uh... Yeah. And then the, the next episode is actually a parody of It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, It's the Grand Pumpkin Millhouse, where they literally take, like, the animation style of Peanuts and they set it to a Simpsons episode. They do a really good job of imitating the style of Peanuts. They actually. did. Yeah, I was going to say as much. Like, holy crap, I just saw that episode recently because I was, I was catching up on a bunch of them, but, like, yeah. the way that they sort of subtly tweak the Simpsons animation style to fit the style of that show is, like, Incredible. Well, everything's animated at flat angles yeah. and like up against. Yeah, the yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. And they On a brief aside, I kind of want to try and see them do this again, but for a Christmas episode because it's, they already homaged the Charlie Brown Christmas at the end of Bart Simpson's Dracula. Do a full <laughs> episode of it. Happy Halloween! <laughs> I love that. No, but like, because a Charlie Brown Christmas is one of the most beloved Peanut specials. Yeah. The Simpsons can do that same style of animation with a Christmas episode. Yeah, for sure. I know they can. Yeah. yeah. Alright, um, I guess I'll go next. Um, so we talked a little bit about Kubrick and the Shining uh, parody of The Shining. But I think one that's yeah. really, really overlooked is um, uh, A Clockwork Yellow. So this one is an obvious oh, nod. Yeah. This is an obvious <laughs> nod to A Clockwork Orange. But it's kind of... I should watch that film sometime. You haven't seen A Clockwork Orange? I know, look, I know of it. I know it's based on a book. I know that obviously The Simpsons have homaged it a couple times. Oh, Maybe they, it's just because, like, it's a little dark for me. It is very, well, yeah, it's pretty uh, violent and, uh, yeah, it is dark. Um, I've seen the movie, like, countless times. I've read the book. It's very good. Um, yeah, and, like, if with all that, when I watch this parody, I'm just tickled pink because they do everything. They parody the slow motion. They parody the fighting. Yeah. They parody the really weird language that was developed in the making of the book. Um, and uh, the cherry on top of this like gorgeously violent Sunday is that they go into a mansion and it suddenly shifts into a parody of Eyes Wide Shut, which is Kubrick's last With film. the sex blockers! <laughs> Thank you. And I couldn't yeah. even get laid in an orgy. But I was happy. Oh, and they throw, toss in a couple, like, other Kubrick references, like 2001, uh, yep. Full Metal Jacket, and even Barry Lyndon, and comic book guys, like, even I don't know what this is a reference to. <laughs> okay. That was hilarious. And then it ends up, <laughs> Kubrick is just looking at the editing, and is like, alright, we gotta do this all over again, burn it. <laughs> yeah. He's just all dead serious. I don't know, if you're like a, if you love Kubrick and if you want to like enjoy another parody, not on the, not quite on the same level as The Shinning, but like still really, really great, I would highly recommend A Clockwork Yellow. Oh yeah. Especially since it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I just, I, I get a lot of giggles from watching it. That's just my, that's my jam. Yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. That's a really effective uh, cinephile's dream, that, that episode. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. totally, totally, totally. All right. Uh, I, I, how appropriate! One of my last, my last pick is actually the segment right after this one from that same episode, The Others. Oh yes, this one's really good. They yeah. just find frosty chocolate milkshakes and Tracy Omanero Simpsons. Welcome back. We missed you. <laughs> it's actually really interesting just to not only see the dynamic between the two families, where basically real Homer is attracted to Ghost Marge, and so Ghost Homer is jealous, and Mar real Homer Marge is jealous. And then just mass killing everywhere. And then groundskeeper Willie takes the corpses away to make stew, apparently. And we never see Maggie again. But basically, the two dimensions of Simpsons are interacting with each other. And the next day, Lisa's asking, like, 
Are there any other dimensions we don't know about? Look outside the door. You see a whole bunch. You see Simpsons like South, anime like South Park, the Le- the Lego Family from Brick Like Me. You see a whole bunch of anime like Adventure Time. This just opens up a can of worms on all these different alternate Simpsons timelines we could be looking at. Don't forget, and I want more of that, please. Don't forget yeah, the it's, Pixar it's, one. It's don't forget the Pixar one with John Ratzenberger coming in. Oh, yeah. Yes, of oh, course. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best part about that. It leaves you wanting so much more of these different Simpsons universes. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a really nice treat of an episode, because even though they're, like, the Tracy Ullman shorts, I always enjoy watching every now and then. And, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was really cool that they actually to put in the effort to, like, imitate the animation style. It's so cool to see the voice actors in 2014 uh basically make their make themselves sound how they did in the late 80s again and like <laughs> flip back and forth yeah they even, yeah, did, they cool. even did the animation trick where bart always like twitches his head anytime he talks yeah for a little bit no that was cute i really like that one that was a good choice um uh evan you are gone so uh michael yeah, yeah i yeah i've still done I think I picked three of the said one so far, but I'll, I'll go into uh, the island of Doctor Hibbert, um, yes. which is a, a parody of uh, the, doc- the island of Doctor Moreau, which is an absolutely flawless movie. Yep, from yep. The be- from beginning, <laughs> middle, and end, all the way um, from like the behind the scenes, just such a well crafted, totally well managed yeah. movie. <laughs> what? Wow. One thing. <laughs> One thing I really like about these Treehouse parodies is whenever they're parodying a thing, kind of casting the show accordingly. We've talked about this a bit hypothetically, but the sort of finale of this segment, when ev- when you just see like every Simpsons, every Springfieldian just sort of reanimated as like their their counterpart animal, is just like really really fun. Yeah, no, that um, was fun. And the the uncomfortable moment where Ned asks Homer to milk him. Uh, <laughs> I just saw that recently, and I was on the floor laughing because the, the careful hesitation where he just asks, Homer, would you mind uh, milking me? Is like, it, it killed me. It was so, so funny. Sexy but yeah, players. back to what I was saying when we were talking about our very first episode is, um, like, it's kind of cool that The Simpsons is... is I mean, movie adaptations notwithstanding, the book is over a hundred years old. So the fact that they're like parodying this kind of um, classic bit of literature is is really really cool. And like, I think if that inspires one kid to read the actual book, I think that's 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 awesome. Because I am a big fan of the original book. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I have one more. I'm not sure if anyone else had to go. Um, I, I I have one more. Um... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one I picked surely for uh, posterity because it's in season 27, episode 26. Um, where is it? Wanted Dead, Then Alive. Also known as the episode where it's Sideshow Bob finally gets his boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This whole episode. And then they run that joke right into the ground. Yeah, this whole episode is Bob finally gets to kill Bart. And he. Um, he, he does, and it kind of reminds me of this one Seth MacFarlane skit where Wile E. Coyote finally kills the Roadrunner, but then he gets depressed because he has nothing else to do in his life. Yeah. And he, yeah. <laughs> and then he becomes a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but for this episode, Bob is like, after killing Bart, he's like all successful, he's all happy, he's working, and then he's like, oh, I'm so disillusioned. What else? You're the only thing that makes me happy, Bob. So he... I don't know if he builds... Yeah, he builds it himself. He builds, like, a reanimation device to, like, keep bringing back Bart so he can keep killing him in numerous, numerous ways. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of violent because you're watching this uh, older man murder a boy. But, you know, it's kind of cathartic in a way because they've been doing this over and over again for, like, most of the entire show. So, it's kind of... It it was something I'm glad they explored fully. And uh, and then they turn him into a and then Bart gets uh, resurrected by his family and then they turn Bart uh, sorry Bob into like some sort of creature. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, like I just thought it was cathartic to see Bob finally like kill Bart. You know, we've been waiting for so long. Yeah. And he will yeah. never do it again. No. <laughs> see, they got 
He had his cake, but he couldn't bake it too. How's that phrase go? Bake your cake. He, he can have, have your cake, cake and eat it too. Have you can have your cake and eat it too. How can you have a cake without eating it though? It's kind of weird. Restraint. Ugh. Yeah. Vodka. Damn. All right. So is that everyone's high point? Because I kind of wanted to end this episode on like one last thing. Yeah, I think I, so. I have one more. Oh, uh, Michael, yeah. Michael, what was yours? I can make it quick. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, Whiz Kids or more. Oh, yeah, Harry Potter parody. Yeah, that was a good one. When it was I, okay to like Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. I, I had a fe- I had a feeling someone was gonna say that, but anyways. Um, the okay. So so just to put this in the context of why I like it. It came out in 2001, which was the same year that the first Harry Potter movie came out. I would what honestly, a glorious time that was, though. <laughs> yeah, I would honestly say at this point in time, The Simpsons and Harry Potter were the two things I was like most into. Wow. So, the fact that they kind of coexisted in this episode was really, really cool for me. Uh, but what I love about this episode as an adult is I was reading about its history recently. And apparently the writers were not really like into this parody at first because not a lot of them kind of knew the franchise. But I might be a bit biased because I know Harry Potter inside and out. But yeah, me too. I think this work. I think this works pretty well as like just a fun story that's kind of separate from the actual Harry Potter material because it's not a parody of any specific story. It's kind of just like, what if these kids went to a school for wizards? <laughs> And, um, like, I think that some of the uh, appeal of Harry Potter, like, in general, is, like, the what-if factor. Like, if, if you went to Hogwarts, like, what house would you be in? Like, what, what subjects would you study? So yeah. the fact that they just, like, transplanted these Simpsons characters into this, like, Hogwarts universe. I don't I don't think they even call it Hogwarts in the story. I don't remember. But no, I don't they, um, they, just, they just craft this, like, really... Like, like they just... I don't know, it's such a testament to the strength of, like, the characters. Like, they just, they transplant the Simpsons into another school, and Bart is still, like, the shit disturber, and Lisa's still the smart one, and Milhouse is still, like, pathetic and whiny and sycophantic mm-hmm. and stuff. And, um, like, I, yeah, I, I just think it's such a well-crafted episode. And I think that the, for the record, I'm not, like, a big fan on, like, kind of, like gross out humor like i'm not i'm not a big fan of like vomit gags Me but either. for whatever reason the image of that like half to form frog <laughs> prince thingy vomiting is like one of the funniest things i've ever I, seen michael i watched that last night with evan and i was, i couldn't stop laughing yeah <laughs> at this ugly thing <laughs> vomiting all over a prince <laughs> yeah like every I, second is pure agony for me <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons did that around that time with vomit gags. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Like they've they've never I know that the Simpsons does it, but I I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna say vomit. this once and drop it. At least it's not that one from Family Guy moving on. Oh yeah, yeah. Who <laughs> wants <laughs> chowder? <laughs> but yeah, like I don't know what it is that 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 creepy little frog prince thing is like one of the funniest one-off characters in the entire show. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we've gone through some highlights. Uh, I, Everyone else wants to have the frog princes. What's the note you want to end on? Because I want to kind of advertise uh, Treehouse of Horror uh, twenty thirty one, which is set to premiere on November first of twenty twenty. Okay. Um, the skits we can expect according to this list that we have here are Toy Gory, a parody of Toy Story okay. Into the Home Reverse, a parody of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and B9 Rewind, a parody of Russian Doll Okay. So None, none of those are horror movies Yeah, the, the eventually it's Even worth, Russian Doll is it's, It is worth mentioning that The Simpsons just stopped doing scary stories in these Halloween episodes and started parodying whatever movie was hot at the time yeah, I mean, I and saw in the case it, of Toy Gory one that was twenty five years too late. Oh yeah, a lot of them are so late. Yeah. Like I saw the the Jurassic Park parody, and 
They even did an Avatar parody for some reason. At least when they did the Transformers parody, they did it at a time when Transformers was popular. Yeah. But they they, they called it Untitled Robot Parody. They couldn't even come up with a clever title for it. I think they were just being... They they were being ironic with that. (laughs) Some of them are a bit lazy, I won't lie, but... but, Ironic? Lazy? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hard Hard to tell the difference. But the note I wanted to end on, fellas, is actually not a Treehouse of Horror episode. It's the only uh, time, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, only yeah, time yeah. the Simpsons has ever ventured into Halloween. And it was just before a Treehouse of Horror episode, too. I am, of course, talking about the episode Halloween of Horror. I believe it's season twenty-seven. Yeah, no, it, this is a this yeah, is a Simpsons this is a Simpsons episode with a consistent narrative from beginning to end. It's not sketches, and it's not grounded in a tainted sense of reality where the Simpsons could get away with anything horror related. This is a real. This is a story that is grounded in the Simpsons universe. Yeah, it's canonical. Yes. Um, Talk about the plot because it's okay. very moving. Yeah, the plot. Uh, yeah, the episode basically is um, the Simpsons are ready for Halloween. Um, Lisa's excited because she can go to a, a Halloween Fright Fest uh, at a theme park or something. Remember those theme parks? Oh my god. I'm mad that we can't go to Wonderland for, for Halloween yeah. on this year. Yeah, that's too bad. But the thing is, uh, Lisa goes in, she's all excited, but she gets freaked the fuck out because uh, the, the, the people running the park kind of go a little overboard with the, the frights and... I'm I mean, not gonna lie. The, being, I, being an eight year old, I'd say, yeah, no. I got feels watching that because not because I was like scared for Lisa, but I just remember the first time I ever like went to Halloween Haunt at Wonder at Canada's Wonderland as a guest because I did have a job there in two, when I was in high school um, for one season. Uh, going there as a guest is actually a really scary experience because like they go out of your way to make sure you're as frightened as possible and some of the mazes we went into are really eerie Mm -hmm. um never mind going on roller coasters like in the middle of the night with uh the dead the dead cold of fall you know nipping at your flesh it's fun going on leviathan at midnight though it is It's it's a treat it really um, is. Um, yeah, so Lisa develops pathological fear of Halloween because of it. Um, <laughs> and also Homer goes to buy some things at a quickie mart, which has turned into like a pop-up shop for Halloween which decorations. Which is a, it's a parody of Spirit Halloween. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, when there's some guys who work at pop-up shops and they're like kind of like freelance, Just... like lousy workers kind of. And uh, yeah. Apu's like, oh, I hate these guys. Kicks them out. And so the guys are like, oh, we're going to get you. You're going to be sorry. And Homer's like, okay, I'm sorry. No, we're going to make you sorry. But I'm already sorry. <laughs> Good <Get> the <laughs> heck. So uh, Marge, in, in, to like, kind of ease Lisa's spirits, she like removes all Halloween you know, like decorations. And Bart's mad because he really wanted to enjoy Halloween this year. So Marge decides to drive uh, Bart to a Halloween party, and uh, Homer's offered to like look after Lisa during Halloween to make sure she's okay because she's kind of going back into her like childhood um, habit of holding on to like a uh, uh, the tail of a, a stuffed raccoon, yeah, which she calls Ta- Taily. Taily, yeah. So yeah, she's not doing too well. She really needs someone to look after her this Halloween. Um, so, um, but the problem is, is that while Homer's looking after Lisa. The guys from the pop-up shop uh, decide to invade his house to the theme of John Carpenter's Halloween. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, uh, should, I do, should I go through the whole episode or should, well, should I leave it off there? I feel like, um, well, it's like, will Lisa overcome her fear? Uh, will Bart have the time? Will Bart have the Halloween of his dreams? Will Homer save the day? Will Homer do what's right by his family like he always does or doesn't? And... He, I gotta be honest, one of the most touching lines in the whole episode is where he looks, he, Homer looks Lisa in the eye and says, Lisa, I've lied to you more times than there are stars in the sky, but this time I'm telling the truth. <laughs> it's it's hilariously sweet. touching. No, that's yeah. the thing, I am so surprised. I'm gonna be honest, guys, this is one of the best modern Simpsons episodes I've ever seen. Like I, I agree. Is this not a two-parter, or is it not? Oh, no, like a, it's one like episode. Like a longer episode? I, I thought I remembered reading something about it was a slightly longer episode. Um, no, it's it's a standard episode. I do know what you mean. I think the Thanksgiving episode, the Treehouse of Thanksgiving, was slightly longer than usual. 
The one Thanksgiving of horror. Thanksgiving of horror. That's yeah. the, my next question is: Do we count that? Because technically, it is the same idea of an anthology series with horror elements, but based around Thanksgiving. I mean, I guess it does count. They were just being funny, I suppose. I haven't that seen that one. That is one of the best Monitons episode. That's one of the best episodes of the show as of late. Oh, the, the Thanksgiving of Horror one? It is Rusty Taylor's final hurrah as the voice uh, of Martin yeah. and a bunch of other characters before she passed away oh. last year. It is a mm. really unique concept, and I'm really glad they took that chance with that one, yeah. with okay. that episode. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Maybe I'll check it you out. You should check it out. It's... it's uh, when when uh, season thirty one goes on uh, Disney Plus, which should be this month, I believe. Mm. Okay, I'll get, to, I'll, I'll get to that yeah. right after I watch The Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. So never then. Good to know. <laughs> well, no, I mean Mandalorian will come out. It'll have its season. And I'll wait another year for the next season. Oh, yeah, and those Marvel shows that for some reason are just like taking forever to come out yeah. that's what i was thinking like what if this was supposed to be one of the ones that they were going to put on disney plus i'm like meanwhile the simpsons has been doing a what if thing for years yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> playing with all these ideas but yeah really Mars no, becomes guys. a robot maybe mo gets a cell phone has bought a hero to bear about a crazy wedding and yeah. something happens and do 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 Oh, sorry, I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt your flow of the song, but I just I just had a, a brainwave because I was actually thinking about that earlier today, believe it or not, because when we were prepping for this episode, I was thinking to myself how much I love the Treehouse of Horror episodes because they I don't think they ever will run out of ideas because they're they're you know they're calling ideas from pop culture. Yeah, there's always cool. something I look forward to each season because they're typically yeah yeah pretty good. and like I. I find that they're always like they're endlessly creative kind of parodies uh -huh. and they, they do exist outside of the regular Simpsons canon. So it's like they can they can just write some crazy stuff without it being a disservice to the show in any way. Yeah. And, and even, even for the later um, episodes where yeah. it's like where it's like, yeah, like most of the segments, like you'll have one segment that's a dud or maybe two segments that are a dud. There's at least one segment that's like pretty pretty strong overall that kind of sticks to my head no matter what. So yeah, they're yeah. All, they're all pretty consistently like strong overall. There's not one that's outright lousy. So it's yeah, yeah. it's always a fun exercise of like um, once you know what the parodies are going to be, it's it's almost sort of like okay, how are they going to pull this off? Like who's yeah. going to play who? And uh, like yeah, I, I've looked forward to them forever and i think that they stay pretty consistent all these years later it's a nice thing to do yeah. on a slow october for sure even <laughs> even if the execution of all these skits isn't amazing the idea alone like just gets your brain jogging i think that's really special yeah slap simpsons yeah. on anything guys yeah probably a hit <laughs> okay um so i guess that pretty well covers it yeah that's uh uh, that is a close on our uh, Trias of Horror retrospective. I hope you all had fun. Um, comment below if we hope uh, you learned something. <laughs> comment yeah. below if we missed any of your favorite Trias of Horror segments. <laughs> uh, and remember, no TV and no beer make those two something something. Go crazy! crazy? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Come on, Josh. <laughs> Come on, Josh! Give me the vet! Give me the vet! Give me the vet! <laughs> Scaredy cat! Ah! Fuck!